Traders, how are you? With Marcello, founder of the Day Trading Academy. Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week, watching the Soccer Cup, America Cup. Well, it doesn't interest you at all, my American friends. Uh, this week we have Warren Buffett deciding to uh, deciding how he's going to give away his $130 billion to charity after he's gone. He is in his 90s, by the way. We have updated news about the people who took the thing in your arm from the pandemic, how your life expectancy now is lower than before. And we also have news about blackouts in Europe. Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> So this week, the stock markets were helped by Tesla absolutely surging. I think for the week, it was over 24% over the last five days. That was on Tuesday. Obviously, we had July 4th. Happy Independence Day for all of you. This is my face for all of the people that supported the stupid lockdowns during the pandemic. For the virus that, according to the CDC, had a 99.96% survival rate everybody who's celebrating july 4th that supported that should absolutely not be supporting july 4th for the record other than that powell said that inflation powell is the uh the chairman of the central bank in the united states he said that inflation resumed its downward shift but he declined to say that he's going to lower the interest rates Remember that in most industrialized nations around the world, the consumer spending is the absolute biggest percentage of the economy. So you, you and I going out and spending money, whether it's buying a house or a car or things in a store or things on the street, that essentially is about almost 70% of the economy in the United States. Germany, which is the third largest economy in the world, they're about 50% or so. Japan, I looked it up also, they're about 50% as well. So... When interest rates are higher for longer, that means that the consumer can't afford as much. Obviously, they raise the interest rates to bring inflation down, but unfortunately, that also slows down the economy. And that's part of the reason how they get inflation down, essentially. So when they lower interest rates, that means that it gets the economy moving again, right? And so there's a problem now where if they drop rates too fast before the inflation completely down, then the inflation is going to continue to go up again, which is not bueno for anybody. So they're still kind of a, a sidestepping. Uh, that's not the right way to phrase it. It's like a, a careful uh, tiptoeing that the central bank is, is doing because they're saying that they're going to lower rates because the economy is starting to show that it's not doing as well. But they're not saying when because inflation hasn't come down all the way yet. So they don't, if they put the interest rates down lower earlier than they should, then that's not going to be good for the economy overall. Conspiracy, conspiracy theory here. What if they might do it on purpose just in case orange man Trump wins the election to blame him for the financial crisis? That would be a good one, no? Markets in the United States, all positive. The uh, Communist Republic of Canada went up 0.83%. Again, happy 4th of July from everybody uh, to everybody. The meal for July 4th has gone up 30% since 2019, according to the official numbers. But there were people that were uploading the receipts from about two years ago, for example. There's a man who was uploading exactly the same things that he bought two years ago. And then everybody kind of started a trend. The prices have actually gone up 200 to to 1,000%. And this guy that started the trend on TikTok, he bought 45 items two years ago at Walmart. It was just $145. Now it's $414. If you do the math on that, it's about 300, 400%. But remember, the government's telling you that the inflation rate is only 3 or 4%. The recent study shows that the people who got the double thing in their arm from the pandemic uh, lost 37% of their life expectancy uh, against people who didn't get the thing in their arm. The murder rate in socialist Venezuela is at a 22-year low, thanks to the fact that all of these people are coming to the U.S. now for the open border. 
crime is going to start to increase. And and one of the things I want you to know as well is that the FBI numbers and the numbers that they're showing is officially of the crime, they're saying that are going down. But in reality, they're just not calling crime crime anymore, if that makes sense, right? So if somebody goes and steals a car, they let them go right away. In California, for example, you can steal up to $900 at any store and they won't even call the police. You can just walk out. Go back the next day, steal another nine hundred dollars. So that's basically what's happening when it comes to the crime. The electricity networks in Eastern Europe—that's Albania, Croatia, Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina—blacked out with a supreme heat wave. It got to one hundred and six degrees Fahrenheit. That's about forty-one degrees Celsius. If you guys don't know where that is, uh, Italy to the right of the ocean in Italy, just across the Adriatic. Overseas market news, the European markets are mostly higher with the Parisian, the French markets being most positive of all. Latin American markets are mostly higher as well. The Bovespa, which is the largest market in all of Latin America, went up 1.90%. Africa and the Middle East, mostly mixed. Egypt was the biggest winner there. And then in the far, far east, Asia, Australia, Japan was the biggest winner at over 3%. And then in Bitcoin and crypto space, a federal judge ruled that a lawsuit filed by the SEC, which is a regulatory body in the United States, against Binance can proceed. Binance, remember, is still the largest crypto exchange in the world. And they're saying that Binance and the former CEO, Chang Peng Zhao, broke securities laws. Even though, remember, that they haven't actually defined those laws yet when it came to when it comes to crypto the uh, bitcoin for the week i just lost my spot give me one second went down bitcoin went down over just under eight percent to fifty six thousand five hundred and seventy five i got those numbers on saturday remember it's really volatile so on sunday it might be very different when you guys watch this video commodities and energy russia after the invasion of ukraine and western sanctions have amassed a shadow fleet to carry around their gas and oil specifically to other countries. They're now saying that they're starting to amass quite a fleet as well to be able to transport their liquefied natural gas. Oil prices hit their highest level since April on Thursday, thanks to the hurricane that's going through the Caribbean now. It hit the Yucatan Peninsula. I hope all of you guys are okay. Now, supposedly, they're saying that it's going to hit Texas after reforming and getting stronger. China has become super dominant when it comes to rare earth metals. There's 17 minerals produced at lower prices than the West. These minerals are are more rare than silver and gold. And thanks to the fact that China, for example, doesn't respect the environment. They just go in and, you know, take off all the mining and, you know, they own a lot of these uh, mines, not only of rare earth metals, but also other mines in Africa, for example, as well. And these rare earth metals are super important when it comes to EVs, for example, uh, military applications. So Europe and the United States really want to get their mining going. But we have environmentalists and also we protect the environment on our side of the world. One thing to keep in touch, uh, to keep in mind as well, is that between India and China, they're building one coal power plant a week, right? So all of these people that are complaining about that we're not comp- protecting the environment i just want to i just want to speak a, kind of analytically about this while they're telling you that you can have a gas powered pizza oven that you need to stop eating pizza that's made by gas or wood fired because it's bad for the environment china and india are building one coal power plant a week between both of them China now emits more carbon emissions and more pollutions than the entire G20 combined. That's all of the United States, Canada, all of Europe, Brazil, every, almost literally everybody in the developed world. So if somebody tells you that we're not doing enough, send them a ticket to go to China to go protest over there to see how well they take it. Because it doesn't matter what we do, because China and India are essentially, according to them, destroying the environment for us. In the other news, when it comes to commodities, gold went up 2.66% to 2389 Silver went up almost 7% to $31.16. 
Financial and banking news, State Farm, which is one of the largest insurers in the United States, the largest in California, gave the state of California, remember, which is the largest state in the United States, especially when it comes to population, they gave the government of California an ultimatum saying, either let us raise the rates 50%, five zero, or we're going to leave the state. This is due, obviously, to the a lot of the wildfires. If you guys that follow Conspiracy Marcello, I think there's going to be a, a pretty serious earthquake around there, probably within two or three years or so. Um, I personally think that they know what's coming. Otherwise, why would they be raising their weights so much, right? Although it's happening in Florida, but Florida, there's a little bit more of an excuse to the fact that we get the hurricanes so often. Bank for International Settlements, or BIS, it warns that rising debt levels a bit uh, major elections this year is going to be a major risk. So they're saying that not only is the levels of debt that we have right now super dangerous, but also the elections carry a lot of risk. Obviously, they're part of these global communist cabal from the left. So now that the extreme right is starting to win a lot of the elections, obviously that's, that's a risk now. We got, we got to report that's a risk. And I always try to be apolitical when I do these videos, but one of the things I do want to say is, I don't think it really matters whether it's the left or the right. At the end of the day, they're both driving the cars off the cliff, right? One is just driving slower than the other. But one of the things I do have to say is that we really don't live in a capitalist society anymore, right? You need a permit literally to go use the bathroom at this point. That's not capitalism. So if humans are inherently corrupt, we need to create a system where they're not able to use the corruption. That's why I prefer a capitalist society because a true capitalist society, not the one that we're living in today, for example, literally takes the power away from the government where we have completely free markets. But we don't live in that kind of society anymore, even though they do try to blame capitalism for everything nowadays. In my opinion, the reason why everything doesn't work anymore is because we don't live in a capitalist society anymore. Brazil, Lula in Brazil is going to look to lower the country's fiscal frame, uh, fiscal framework with some approved spending cuts. About $4.7 billion is going to cut in government spending. The real has weakened about 13% so far in June, 6% in June alone against the United States dollar. The Germany CPI or the consumer price index, uh, went down to 2.3%, which is its lowest level since June 2021. I'm just going to switch spots here. I'm at a hotel. I gotta switch legs here. Give me one. Give me one second. Give me one second. All right, back it out. Political news: The Germany far right party has surged in membership in the the elections. They've risen sixty percent since June two thousand and twenty-two. Your Uruguayans in South America are going to the polls, where the left wing is in the lead. There, Marine Le Pen in France. Absolutely slaughtered the election. She won 33% of the vote, which is the largest so far. She's also the extreme right. And Supreme Court rules that Trump is immune from criminal charges for official actions, not unofficial actions. So now the New York judge in the hush money case in New York is going to set back the sentencing for him. Another Supreme Court decision that was really good that came out this week was called the uh, the Chevron Doctrine where basically they overturn that. And basically what that means is before, if there wasn't a law, one of these administrative government agencies, you know, usually the ones with three letters, could basically just make a rule and make you follow it because essentially it was the way that they interpreted the law. Well, now the Supreme Court has overturned that and basically said, no, in order for people to make rules, the Congress has to pass the law. So now hopefully the, the super state with all these rules and all these things that have never been passed into law will start being challenged in the court system so we can get rid of some of these rules and regulations and everything that, that we have. Economic news, China's manufacturing activity fell for the second month in June. It's at its five month low. That's a, a big number for China because although they're the second largest economy in the world, they have a huge manufacturing sector. They essentially make everything for the whole world. The property crisis in China is continuing to drag in domestic demand. 
Their services index sank to a five-month low as well, while the PMI for construction or the construction index fell to its lowest rate since July in 2023. Now, one of the things that we have to know about a lot of these kind of economic numbers is that the the majority of the pensions and the money, the savings, let's call it, that we have in most industrialized nations is in the stock market. That's part of the reason why we had the 2008-2009 crisis. They lowered the interest rates to record levels to boost demand. So if the stocks go up, that means that you think you're rich because you see what your stock portfolio is and then you go out and spend money. Because remember, in the United States, the consumer spending is almost 70% of the economy. In China, it's not quite the same. They have a real estate sector, and the real estate is where the majority of people have their money rather than the stock market. So when we talk about the second largest economy in the world, their biggest market is the real estate market. So that's something that's big news because if their real estate market is still in a crisis, that means that the economy is not going to do well overall. Canada's GDP rose 0.3% in April. Wednesday showing the first time that the U.S. unemployment went up in uh, compared to last week. The joblessness rate also rose. The unemployment rate climbed to 4.1 percent, which is the highest level since October 2021. Listen to this. Nearly three quarters of jobs from last month are from the government and half of all job growth from past the year is literally from adjustments in the birth rate and the death rate. The rest of the jobs, which is the public sector, is it doing so well? Corporate news, Tesla surged over 25% as they beat the analyst expectations for deliveries. Their stock has gone up over 46% in the last three months. Their uh, Cybertruck supposedly may have become the best-selling electric vehicle truck in the United States. SpaceX The rocket company from Elon Musk that's been offering Starlink, they now are going to put hundreds of satellites into space to be able to offer satellite to cell phone, direct satellite to cell phone service. The first company that's going to be offering it in the U.S. is T-Mobile. And next-gen use of combos and sensors, robotics and AI, the next revolution that we're going to see in AI, they're talking about doing it in agriculture where tractors are going to drive themselves and robots are going to get weeds and things of that nature. They already have, for example, uh, vineyards in California and also Chicago that are using this technology. And Ford is expecting a new 30,000 electric vehicle where they can make a, a profit in two and a half years. Remember that most of these U.S. car makers and most car makers around the world can make electric vehicles profitable other than for example tesla and byd which is out of china and international events as i mentioned hurricane barrel a category four the first uh the earliest hurricane to date in the season ever and the earliest category five barreled into mexico now it's supposedly going to texas and china is warning warning a prolonged heat wave might start to affect their crops which is cotton and also rice And an interesting fact, Greece is introducing a six-day working week for some businesses in a bid to boost productivity, which, for example, what I was telling you guys before about capitalism, the market should decide that, not the government. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the preppers were right.